Welcome to Tech Brothers with Damir. In this video, we are going to learn how to load Excel file names, with sheet names, uh, row count, last modified date, file size in SQL Server table. So first of all, why we need to do that? Think about a scenario where you have a lot of files. Let's say you had been archiving file from last five years. And now your manager asked me, hey, uh, how many files we have in this folder? You can go ahead and open a folder. Then your manager asked, can you tell me like we have different type of files sitting there with different names, how many sheet uh, per file we have? Then yes, he said, okay, you open some files, you say maybe two files, two sheets, three sheets and all that. And he said that we committed to get two sheets, but they start providing us three sheets or we committed to get one sheet and they start providing us three sheets. Then he can go back. I want to get some estimates on the storage. He said, okay, five years ago, what was the size of this file and how much growth we have over the time in this Excel file? And uh, or we are getting the same static file over the time, same number of records, uh, there is no growth, there are no uh, increase in the record count. So these all questions can take you uh, years to figure it out if you have uh, thousands of files. But um, with this, uh, what we can do, we are going to get that information, put into SQL table, and then you can write simple queries uh, uh, to give uh, answer to your manager or to yourself like uh, about your Excel file sitting in a folder. Now go ahead and open uh, techbrothersit.com uh, and once you are there uh, you are going to open uh, uh, you are going to go to the SSIS video tutorial why i'm saying that because i have posted the scripts already there now i don't want to write these scripts uh, uh, every time and uh, waste a lot of time on writing part so you come under script task and then you come under uh, excel file uh, excel source and destination script as dynamic and here you will see how to load excel file names with sheet names row count and all that information you click here and we are going to copy things from here it is going to say a folder path excel file name sheet name number of records last modified last access and uh, file size in kb so what we will do we'll copy this table that's where we are going to store that information now we are going to give me one second here and uh, let's go ahead and open a new query paste and uh, go ahead and run this query it is going to create uh, this uh, table and uh, one thing I noticed uh, while I was copying this code uh, uh, there is some wrong information on the blog I probably fixed that uh, right not right now but later uh, here you see that uh, we have folder path, we have uh, schema name and table name. Here it is in customer. That should be actually the uh, Excel file information table name. So that's uh, wrong, but you can correct it. Uh, the goal was, okay, you create the variables and then provide uh, the folder path where your files are existing. And then you have schema name of the table of uh, Excel uh, uh, file information and uh, that's where the name of the table comes up. So go, let, go ahead and uh, create this uh, package and uh, test this out how it works. Uh, we have uh, some files sitting in uh, one of the folder. I'm gonna go here to my videos and then uh, I have a source folder. I have three all of a sudden the computer is slow. I have no idea. Uh, we have three Excel files here and uh, two of them uh, uh, this one has two sheets, this one has uh, two sheets, this one has a single sheet uh, and uh, I can open and actually show you. I hope uh, the computer will perform a little better and uh, meanwhile these uh, Excels are open and I'm going to go ahead and open SSDT SQL Server Data Tools and uh, create a new package. Um, looks like it's... Okay, let's take a look on the Excel first then if it is open. Now you can see that on the sheet one, I have only one record here on sheet two, I have a lot of records. So I, I don't want to go, go all the way and find how many records I have and uh, what is the size and all that. So I'm going to close this uh, Excel for now and uh, load the information by using SSIS package and then take a look on the table. New SSIS package. Uh, let's go ahead and rename this one. have no idea why it is uh, doing that it was really fast like a minute ago uh, load excel file information now we are gonna go ahead and create uh, the variables first uh, so click uh, on the you to come to the variable you right click here in the control flow click on the variables and you will see the variable panel 
uh, once you are here you will be clicking add variable and uh, we will add folder path now it is going to be string then I'm going to provide another variable called schema name and uh, this is going to be string as well and uh, the last one is a table name that's where we would like to save our information why I create these variables so I can use them in the configuration so on different uh, environments you can have different uh, folder path from where you want to read the files or uh, you have different name for your uh, table where you would like to save the information um, so you can just simply change uh, the configuration value for these variable and you are good to go you don't have to make any changes uh, and uh, here it is going to be string as well and the table name is uh, excel file information paste it here go ahead and uh, create a, a new connection uh, uh, we will be here in uh, uh, connection managers right click here and then a uh, new ADO connection it's already created I don't want to use it I want to show you how to create it I will click on the new and uh, then we will provide SQL server name so I will go to my SQL server and uh, run this query select at the rate at the rate server and then I will get uh, my SQL server instance name and provide it here I could have just uh, click on drop down but it, it takes some time to get those uh, SQL server instances uh, if you have a lot of them and uh, they are on the network uh, so tech brothers IT that's our database this connection looks good hit ok now hit ok and uh, you see that the name is not really great we need to rename this to connection manager so I'm gonna right click rename and uh, let's call this one DB connection uh, underscore tech brothers that tells us okay this is connection manager and uh, the database name is uh, tech brothers IT uh, go to the toolboxes and get the script task once the uh, script task is here in the control flow pan double click and then uh, select the uh, scripting language in my case I'm using uh, C sharp if you like to use VB you can use it but the code I am providing it is in uh, C sharp and uh, click on a uh, read only variable right here we have to map them uh, and the uh, folder path so the script task can use them schema name and then the final we have a table name hit ok and then edit script once you are done that you will come back to tech brothers IT and here are the namespaces we need to add under the uh, region namespaces tab so it is opening right now those namespaces will use different functions and instances uh, from them uh, in our uh, script so come to the namespaces tab right here and uh, click on the plus sign and then uh, hit enter and paste it there are already uh, namespaces by default they are added these are the three one we are adding so you can copy and paste and next uh, we will be coming here to the public void main the main function and pasting our code I'm gonna go back to Jack Brothers IT dot com and get my code uh, I will be putting uh, the link uh, of this code in the description so you can uh, click in the description and get to this uh, uh, code um, so copy this uh, whole thing all the way and I will walk you through quickly what we will do in this uh, um, script uh, so at least you would have understanding what exactly you are doing paste it here now what we are doing here first of all we are declaring some local variables uh, these local variables and then I'm mapping them to the variables I have created in SSIS package I can use uh, these uh, variable as it is wherever I needed but I have to use the DTS dot variable then I provide the variable name and that value dot to string everywhere so instead I created these local variables here so I can just simply use these variable then uh, I'm saying okay read all the files from the folder path so it's going to read all those file names for me once uh, they are saved in the files array and uh, then I can loop through one after one and uh, uh, gather that information for the um, for the sheets uh, because one, I need the file names first uh, and then uh, what I'm doing I'm saying okay SQL connection AD, my ADO connection that's the name I gave I create this new instance uh, and it is pointing to the uh, DTS dot connections and you see that this is the wrong because uh, I am using DB we have changed uh, connection uh, in tech brothers so make sure whatever you are using in your case make those changes I did 
uh, uh, by purpose so you because you are not going to use the same um, very uh, at least the connection manager name variables uh, probably you will use the same one but at least uh, connection manager you have to make changes uh, if you are not using the just the db connection i recommend using the complete with the uh, database name it helps uh, while you are deploying your package to different uh, environments and making changes to the configuration now as we have uh, the save the file names in the uh, array we can loop through and once we loop through i'm creating full file path once i have the full file path i can read that file and i can read the sheets from there so here i'm saying string connection string so i'm building a connection string these are the two variables i created here uh, okay my files will uh, the uh, the headers will be there in my sheets i expect that I, they should be always there and uh, then i'm saying connection string even uh, this is really doesn't matter in this case because we are just reading the row counter so uh, even if you say yes or no header is there or not we, because we are not reading the header and loading the data we are just getting the row count from that sheet and then we say connection string and then we are providing okay microsoft ac dot uh, uh, oled b 12.0 uh, that's the driver we are using and then we are saying okay file full path that's my file is every time it is going to loop through and get the new file name and then we will be reading from that file now once we are there we will open a connection then we will read the sheets so once we read all those sheets and here i'm declaring two very uh, one variables and sheet name and then setting that value to the blank here and then in the next for each loop i'm looping through those sheets so you see that dr sheet i'm looping through i'm saying okay if the it is a uh, it has dollar sign it means it is a correct sheet name and then uh, same in that sheet name in this uh, variable once i save that then i go ahead and run this query on that sheet select count star as row count from that sheet and then save that information uh, in the uh, data table now uh, here i need to get that information from uh, that data table and save into some variable so I, uh, what i did i said okay go to that uh, uh, dt dot rows and the very first row because it is only count star so it is going to be only one so i save that into rc uh, variable so this is a where i am saving that row count information for i read the, that row count um, from the sheet save into data table and then loop through that data table i know that it is the very first uh, uh, column or uh, or entry in that uh, array so i read that and uh, that's it now i'm closing that sheet name i have uh, uh, there are some scenarios i felt that if you have sheet name like let's say start with the uh, numbers and all that so you will have extra columns at the end when you read the sheet names so i am replacing them i don't need them so i replace that in a scenario and then i'm saying uh, okay i'm preparing my insert query i have a sheet names already excuse me <clears throat> I have a sheet file name. I have sheet name. Now I need to insert that information. I have the record count. So I, I say insert into table name and schema name plus table name. And then I say folder path, file name, sheet name, row, last modified, last access file uh, size and all that. Then uh, I'm using those variables uh, for the values. So I'm building my string uh, for the insert statement. So here I'm using folder path, file name, and then uh, with the sheet name i have record count right here then i have file that uh, last uh, write time when was uh, somebody wrote uh, to that file last access time file dot length and divided by um, 1024 so that's going to convert uh, bytes into the kilobytes uh, and uh, here i can uh, print that message actually for you so you can see what exactly our insert query look like and uh, finally we have a uh, uh, SQL command we are preparing that command and we say my use my adio.net connection that we have already declared the instance above and create statement so we are creating a statement and uh, uh, the command text is equal to the insert query that's our variable and then finally we are executing and that's it so in short it's going to loop through all those files then loop through the file sheet on each of the file and then load that information so we are good click uh, save go ahead and run your package run your package here and uh, this is the first insert it uh, created so it is an insert into db.excel file information 
and uh, it read that uh, the first file and uh, all that information you can see from uh, here. Uh, th this is th this really is not required by while you are uh, testing. It is okay to have message box, and if you don't have uh, hundreds of file, you don't uh, you don't want to click every time. Okay, so now it loaded the first record, and we can go ahead and take a look. And you see that uh, this is the folder path. This is the file name. This was sheet one. Rows was one, and this was the modified, and all those dates uh, are there. Now you can go ahead and uh, let's see. Run for the next one. Next one. Next one. Keep running. And uh, once we select uh, the package is completed successfully, it's all good now once you go ahead and run it sorry select query you will see all that information and you see this one the sheet 2 has 1917 rows and then the other one we have this file that has the this is sheet name one row one row and one row so this give you pretty good information and the size as well so you say you can see that and then this is file size so this is not the sheet size. If uh, you have multiple sheets, you will have a, you will see the file size. You are not gonna see the sheet size. So I, I'm not really sure how to calculate that part. Um, and I never take a look on that because most of the time we look for only file size. It's not like sheet size. But uh, that's uh, pretty much it. And uh, um, I hope uh, this uh, video will help and uh, you will at least. Uh, uh, will be able to gather this information and there are other properties of the file you can save into table and uh, I will see you guys in the next video